Today we're talking about Yemen, a war that the United States is about as involved in as a dad who just lost a custody battle. Listen, I really want to get more involved, but the courts won't let me. You've been getting my checks though, right? Now I'm a huge fan of talking about the war powers resolution, so on Wednesday when the house voted to end America's military assistance to Saudi Arabia, my phone started blowing up like a Galaxy Note 7. I knew I had to make an episode about it. Today my goal is first to figure out what the details of this bill are, and then what it means in the broader scope of things. So first, what is this resolution? What would this resolution really accomplish? So I think this resolution is an attempt to have a conversation about U.S. strategy and U.S. values in the Middle East, particularly as it relates to the Yemen war. Well, could you be any vaguer? Start a conversation, maybe the Pepsi protester did win. I guess I'm doing my part though. Fortunately for us, because Google exists, I just grabbed a copy of the resolution and read through it. I mean, for a piece of legislation that's supposed to define our position in the war in Yemen, the thing is seven pages with huge margins and double spacing. They even went the college freshman essay route and included the title page in the overall page count. Anyways, let's get into it. Right off the bat, this resolution hits the ground running by setting the War Powers Resolution, a resolution that gives broad power to Congress in determining, well, war powers. Essentially, the thesis statement of this paper is that the War Powers Resolution gives Congress authority to remove all United States armed forces engaging in activities that the United States is conducting in support of the Saudi-led coalition. Now that includes aerial refueling and targeting assistance. So wow, the House of Representatives just said that, with Senate agreement, Congress has the authority to tell the President that he can no longer assist Saudi Arabia with military actions in Yemen. This is an unprecedented assertion of congressional authority limiting the powers of a president to make war under the War Powers Act. I know the term unprecedented gets thrown around like maybe even more than fake news and witch hunt combined. I mean, we're encountering all sorts of fun first these last two years. But Congress successfully moving to end a war truly is uncharted territory in this modern age. So first, we need to talk about what the US is currently doing in Yemen. Because the war in Yemen is so underreported, it calls the Korean War to mainstream. Right now, the bill emphasizes that America is providing to the Saudi-led coalition aerial targeting assistance, intelligence sharing, and mid-flight aerial refueling. Although, since November 10th, the United States announced we were no longer doing mid-flight aerial fueling. So this leaves us with sharing intelligence and providing aerial targeting assistance. Well, except there was a Republican amendment to allow intelligence sharing with Saudi Arabia to continue. So America will stand firmly against this war by no longer providing aerial targeting assistance. That should really cut down on the collateral damage. Now we could stop selling them billions of dollars worth of bombs, guns, and ammo, but like they give us money for that so that's a non-starter. That's where things start to get interesting because… DOD opposes the resolution because the resolution's fundamental premise is flawed. Because the United States support to the Saudi-led coalition, quote, does not involve any introduction of U.S. forces into hostilities. Yeah, so a key part of the War Powers Resolution says that in order to justify removal of troops from an unauthorized conflict, they have to be in a conflict. Specifically, this requires either hostility or a situation where hostility is imminent. I mean, maybe the logistical planning office in Saudi Arabia has a hostile work environment, but that's not what the War Powers Act envisions. Now I hear some of you watching this going, hmm, well, checkmate. But later that definition gets amended to include logistical support for a foreign warring nation, so they're covered as far as the law is concerned. Now to the broader question of what all this means, because despite the fact that the main thing this does is remove a team that works to identify no fire or restricted sites like hospitals, schools, or mosques, it's a big precedent setting deal. In words that have never effectively been implemented into action before, Congress hereby directs the president to remove United States armed forces from hostilities in or affecting the Republic of Yemen. 
The measure goes to the Senate now, where a similar resolution passed last year. Hey, finally Congress can agree on something. We need to pull United States forces out of the one Middle Eastern country they're not currently in. Alright, quick side note, we do have special forces operating in Yemen, but they're unaffected by this because they're in a separate war against Al Qaeda going on in the background, rather than the primary Yemen civil war Saudi Arabia is fighting. Yeah, breaking news, the Middle East is confusing, and that is a whole separate episode. Stopped quite a few all caps comments with that side note though. Still, most people think that the Senate will vote to pass this resolution, and if that happens, it will be the first time Congress votes to end US participation in a war using the War Powers Resolution. Sure, it's not a war we're participating in, but baby steps. This viewed in the context of other recent episodes I've done where Congress is getting bipartisan support for keeping the president participating in Afghanistan and Syrian wars despite their best efforts shows that something particularly odd is going on here, especially when you consider However, without a two-thirds majority from both chambers of Congress, President Trump can, and has indicated he will, veto the bill, the first veto of his term. Wow, how weak is the War Powers Resolution? Mr. President, we demand you stop this war. You know what? I hear you, but apparently I don't have to listen, so no. As you can imagine, based on everything I've said so far, this vote is being regarded as largely based in symbol rather than in policy. Republicans and Democrats are coming together to say to Saudi Arabia, we don't support your war in Yemen, which is especially astounding because it's a war against an Iranian backed rebel group. Did you know if you say Iranian backed into a mirror three times at midnight, John Bolton shows up behind you and tries to give you a democracy? Try if you dare. Either way, this is leading up to being the first time in United States modern history that Congress successfully, until a looming veto, exercises its right to end a war through the War Powers Resolution. The next step is a Senate vote, which after the amendment that still lets the US exchange information with Saudis about Yemen got approved, is suspected to pass in the higher house as well. So there you have it, an unpopular war that the United States will continue to not participate in. If you ignore the fact that we're selling one side all of the arms they're using in the war, and another schism in foreign policy between the executive and legislative branches over to how to proceed with Saudi Arabia. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the right of my head. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.